I couldn't have done a better introduction myself, which is why I always. <laughs> that was a really nice introduction. Uh, like, right? Rockstar and everything. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, you, I'm going to cheat a little bit now and uh, not ask you so much a question first, but ask you to tell me a story, the Liba story. And, you know, because I, it's a family owned brand and, you know, you sort of transformed it. So, could you sort of take us through that? It's actually a very luck by chance kind of a story, honestly. Um, uh, so, I've actually grown up uh, seeing fa a fashion business in the family since, you know, I was a, a small child, right? My father was into manufacturing of apparel, etc. A few things here and there. And I was actually studying in the UK uh, around 2011-12. And over there, this whole e-commerce wave was really picking up. And, and I was doing economics, right? So, I wanted to become an investment banker, to be honest. Uh, but I saw this wave of e-commerce and how addictive the shopping behavior online used to be and that time we had never done that in India, right? When I went out to study 2009, there was no e-commerce in India. So, we realized that, you know, while studying also, like whatever we were doing, we started ordering the smallest of things online. It was addictive, like, you know, two hours on Amazon and one hour of study. That was, that's how the breakup was back in the day. So, I, I, I felt that this space has huge potential and in a country like ours, uh, where the population is insane, uh, this would be a really big market in years to come, right? Because we've seen a lot of Western trends coming into India, becoming big, blowing up. So, uh, didn't want to miss the bus, came back, uh, started doing some research uh, as to uh, what the marketplace is like Flipkart, Amazon. So, Amazon was not even there actually that time uh, in India. So, Flipkart and Mintras of the world were what they were doing. Chose fashion because it was a much easier category for me to crack because I had some experience. I thought, let me crack e-commerce. Let's not crack the product. Uh, let's let's make that a little easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's how the brand journey started. Uh, started listing on marketplaces and you know, and and that's how we started basically uh, the journey of Libas. And now of course it's been like almost 10, 11 years now. Uh, we are one of the leading and the largest women's fashion brand in the country uh, in the e-commerce side and uh, slowly in the last couple of years scaling up offline as well, opening stores and, and, and that's what the journey has been. Right. And um, you, know, you mentioned uh, that uh, you, you came in because of you, you saw the e-commerce craze and uh, so Liba sort of, you know, you guys sort of graduated together if that makes sense. You know, you guys sort of evolved uh, together. And uh, obviously, you guys have a reputation for like, you know, you're consumer first and like you can trust the brand and the quality of the product. So how did you take that up from, because as with everything, it would have started small, but as you have scaled up and grown it larger and larger, like how has, that, like how have you informed that level of trust and like. Uh, so, so when we were actually, um, so I think in the early years, uh, uh, like one or two years into the business, we realize that there is potential, right? But we realize if you really want to be in a big game, fashion is a very common category in India, right? I think every fourth household is some way or the other associated with some fashion business, either in the family or relatives, etc. So, so we realize that if we really want to do something big, there has to be something. We can't just say fashion and be a fashion brand and say that, you know, we are the best because there are a lot of guys doing really great stuff, some, you know, uh, uh, every day there are new brands coming up with new innovative stuff. So to kind of stay in trend, we realize that we'll form, we, we'll tap on to the nerve of the Indian consumer. What does an Indian consumer want, right? They, they want new things. They want speed. That's how the idea of making Libas a fast fashion brand. So, so we looked at a few uh, case studies that time in the offline space, like Zara was one of the biggest uh, case study. What was Zara built on? It was built on speed. It was built on bringing new things, new trends faster than anybody could. So we wanted to kind of replicate a similar model in the online space for the Indian wear fashion. So we are purely an Indian wear brand, right? We're an ethnic wear brand and, and to kind of, um, we were the first ones to tap onto fast fashion. And that's what actually really clicked for us. And we realized that today in, in the Indian ecosystem, speed is everything. You've seen that with the quick commerce journey, right? That suddenly you yeah. increase the reduced delivery times from say two days to 20 minutes, yeah. your conversion rate drives up by like 100x, right? Yeah. So that's a pure example of how important speed is. And by speed, I mean in every aspect of the business, we apply that. So we, we use this uh, buzzword for everything internally in the back end, like something as small as uh, 
any new trend that comes in. We don't work on a season basis anymore. We say that yeah, this trend is coming. Social media, we have to launch this style in ten days. So we've stopped working. We're making it more real time fashion than the whole traditional ways of planning two seasons in advance, then launching it, seeing what's working. What's it's all that is crap now. We like a trend. So our social media is our mood board. We have you know internal groups, internal mood boards that we create and update on a daily basis as compared to vis a vis. Back in the day, where we used to do it like as per seasons, etc. Yeah. So I think that's what's worked well for us, and that's what has yeah. been a key USP, and 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 that's how we built uh, people trust us for bringing them the right fashion at the right value at the right time. So I think and 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 consistently doing that for like so many years is why I think people trust us uh, more than anything. Right. And uh, I mean, you very nicely uh, killed my uh, festive season question. <laughs> but uh, no, what's uh, fun about that is, like you said, you know, it's you're re you're reacting to the customer, right? And you have whatever they want when they need. Now, uh, with 250 million Indians coming online in 2025, 20, uh, like, what's what's the strategy for them? For a lot of people who will be accessing the internet for the first time, for instance, like, what is Libas' strategy for reaching out to them? See, I think uh, the customer journey is we realize that India is a uh, not just a, a price sensitive market, they also want great value for their product, right? And and we realize that today the majority of the growth for the e-commerce segment is actually happening from say smaller towns because mm -hmm. uh, metros have fairly been penetrated, uh, uh, certain state capitals etc have been penetrated, it's actually the smaller towns which are now picking up. And for them uh, to buy a brand which they've never experienced, to convince them to buy is a little difficult because they don't want to spend more than a certain amount of money on a particular product or a particular category. Like for example, if they're buying a mobile phone, they probably want to first purchase a 5,000 or an 8,000 or a 9,000 rupee product and then evolve. So we, we realized that that's what was happening. So we realized that uh, we will create certain massy segments which are, you know, more approachable yet um, no compromise on quality high on fashion high on trend uh, and and then slowly as that customer progresses because for them it's an upgrade like you get them win their confidence in their first purchase then then increase their basket size over their next few purchases right so that's the strategy that we are following uh, we are also doing a lot of new marketing initiatives you know like say getting brand ambassadors getting local influencers local brand ambassador to kind of represent our products so that is something that we are doing in fact we are also working on a project um, which is more regional in nature with influencers trying to create like an accelerator program for influencers because to reach them it's very difficult you don't know which influencer is good right so creating shout outs with that new project where they reach out to us and we incentivize them in multiple ways. So it's hopefully going to go live by the end of, uh, sorry, mid of next year and it's going to take about four to five months to crack it. So so we are doing that as well. And, um, you know, like uh, backstage, you, uh, you were talking about your, now that you're doing brick and mortar properly and, you know, you want, you're sort of really looking at that. And I'm just curious, uh, like, how has your e-commerce journey informed your brick and mortar strategies because you know it's you're doing the reverse of many legacy brands who are brick and mortar and they went to e-commerce i feel the journey for brands like us is much easier moving from online to offline vis-a-vis -vis like you know going offline to online mm -hmm. because when you start brick and mortar first and then go online you have to regionally go to smaller towns cities crack them create your brand awareness there right we have centrally created brand awareness over the last seven eight years nine years so there are most cities most regions people already indian wear buyers would already some way or the other experience the brand right so so when we're actually opening brick and mortar uh, seeing the data where our products are selling the highest which regions have the highest acceptance levels so when we are going there, it's it's not a new journey. People are walking into the stores being very happy that we are so happy Libas is finally in our town, right? right? Yeah. So it's been about uh, two and a half years since we started our retail journey, opened like 20 plus store, 500 plus shopping shops already in these two, two and a half years mm -hmm. and uh, not spent a zero penny on offline marketing. So not spent a single penny on uh, any form of offline marketing, still completely digital mm -hmm. and uh, stores opening, word of mouth, people coming in, being very happy and all our stores have been profitable since day one. So, so I think the online to offline journey is way easier as compared to offline to online. Okay. And, um, you know, like you said, uh, you 
ha haven't really spent on uh, traditional media for your advertising and stuff. But uh, going forward, do you do you see that? Uh, because like you said, the awareness is already there, and uh, there's this idea with traditional media that you get last mile reach. But I mean, is that something you will look at because you already seem to have it? Yeah, so being a digital first brands, honestly you don't like the old traditional ways of marketing, honestly speaking. But we also do realize that they are in need of the hour at certain stages of the business. We are accelerating, accelerating our offline journey, you know, like in a very big way over the next two years, the plan is to open 200 stores, right? Mm -hmm. So when we do that, when we are going at that kind of scale, because offline market is expensive, plus you can't do any kind of attribution to how right. good or bad it has been, right? Yeah. It's just to create more brand recall. Once we feel that we have a much bigger foot in the market in terms of having more stores, etc., of course, we're going to have, you know, central uh, pan-India kind of offline marketing plans as well. Right. And um, so, can you tell me a little bit about uh, sustainability? Because you're talking about buzzwords and sustainability is sort of like the biggest thing. And uh, because it's fashion, right, and it is fast fashion, but you also sort of have to reconcile that with the idea of sustainability. So could you tell me a little bit about that? So, I mean, uh, any fast fashion brand founder cannot talk about sustainability, sustainability without being hypocrite, right? So, so while I know it's the need of the hour and that's something, I, I, I think this is a question that comes to me almost every 15, 20 days, right? And mm -hmm. Different talk shows, etc. I think the answer remains the same that sustainability is actually a journey. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's something that how do you start and where do you start and what are the initiatives that you've taken, right? So when you talk about us, uh, when we look at sustainability, obviously uh, we are reducing a lot the use of, uh, you know, uh, plastics or say uh, poly materials that go into the clothing. In fact, uh, our new office, which we just set up a one lakh square foot space, it's completely, it's a gold standard, uh, it's a, a green building as well. Uh, we are signing up new warehouses, third party warehouses, which are again green building certified. So there are a lot of initiatives that are happening. And, and like I said, it's a 10 year, 15 year journey where we know that we need to start today so that five years later, when it's actually more important than what it is today, uh, we should not be in the back seat, right? We should have uh, we should have taken the right initiatives to kind right. of reach our goals. Yeah. But yes, uh, sustainability has also got to do with a lot of policies that need to be set aside, right? Because in India, we have to understand that people's decisions are not going to change because of, uh, say, wanting more sustainability is going to go. It has to do with a lot with policy making, yeah. right? Today. Uh, government is making an effort to reduce the price of electric cars, right? That's a policy in itself. Similarly, when those kind of things will happen in the case of, say, fashion, etc., we'll see that it'll be a lot easier, right? So, right. so, so I mean, that's our approach yeah. towards sustainability. And, uh, you know, one thing you mentioned that uh, you sort of look at the trends and you react to them and stuff. And the thing is now, Libas is a brand, like, it's a very well-established brand, right? And it's only going to go bigger with the 200 stores coming in and stuff. So, uh, do you foresee a future where Libas is actually going to inform the trends? rather than react to them. So, so I think, uh, so how we divide our business, even today, I think we have set a lot of trends as well. I wouldn't say that uh, we are only uh, react. taking in or reacting to trends. But yes, adapting is a lot easier than creating mm -hmm. because creating takes a lot of time and then to kind of have proof of concept takes a lot more time, right? Because right. here it's a proven concept that everybody is talking about something and you quickly adapt to that, right? So we have two parts of businesses where uh, we adapt and we create. So even when we adapt, we have a lot of creativity which goes into adapting right. as well, right? It's not right. like I see, I like this shirt and I copy it tomorrow. Yeah. So, so that's not how we look at it. We, we look at trends, we look at things that people are talking about and then we have our own unique ways to adapting and kind of recreating it. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I mean, of course, as a fashion brand, if we don't innovate, uh, right. there's only a handful of things we'll be able to do, yeah. right? And uh, so, you know, you spoke a lot about going into like, uh, because of penetration in like capitals and like the metros and uh, going into uh, the smaller uh, towns. But uh, what about uh, Libas in like largest, in larger cities? I mean, you know, where's your priority? Is it still tier two, tier three, or is it like? See, when we're opening our stores, uh, when we're expanding offline, uh, we are actually looking at more evolved markets which have done well for us in the e-commerce space, which right. would be, say, metros. That's mm -hmm. what we penetrated first in the early days. Right. So, uh, but yes, when we talk about e-commerce strategy, because we penetrated most of the large cities, 
majority of the effort is now going into go to the smaller towns. So very different strategies in acquiring new customer offline and online. Offline it's still going to be fairly larger cities and we feel that in the first one, one and a half years once we capture and get a strong foothold then we're going to tap on to more regional spaces as well. So, so that's how our offline strategy is going to be. Well, I, I think your strategy to become an investment bank uh, turned, <laughs> turned out well. You now I'm looking for investment bankers <laughs> for me. <laughs> no, but you turned out uh, investing it. Lovely. Uh, thank you so, so much.